This is going to be a quick video to show you how to use Microsoft Ice to make nice panoramas like this, which is a 180, or like this, a 360. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to your browser, and Microsoft Ice is no longer available through their website, but the Internet Archive still has it. So this link will be down in the description, and you can go to their website, and for me, I'm using the 64-bit Windows. Go ahead and click on it. You can just run through the wizard and get your own setup. So here we have Microsoft Ice booted up, and I'm going to show you how to make a panorama super easily. So you can either click New Panorama from Images, and it'll ask you to browse, or you can just drag in a group. Here I have 26, and they're all selected. Here you can choose whether you want a simple panorama where it'll detect it itself, or if you want to tell it exactly how they should be laid out. You can tell it the number of rows, the number of columns, etc. But I'll just go with Simple Panorama and hit Next. Now it's going to line all of the images. If you're taking these manually with a tripod, you're going to want to have a third of the image overlap on every picture. So here we go, we've got our lined up image. We can drag it this way to align the horizon. We want it aligned along this bar. And this doesn't do anything at this step, we're just scrolling through to make sure that everything looks good. And you can see here, it's one continuous panorama, it goes all the way to the ground, and not the sky, because my drone gimbal only goes up 20 degrees. Over here we have different projections you can mess around with. If you want a 180 degree panorama, I recommend the Mercator projection, because you'll end up with a lot straighter lines, like in the first panorama I showed at the beginning of this video. You can also mess around with all of these other ones to get some fun creative effects. But if we're going for a full spherical panorama that can be displayed in another app later, we'll go with spherical. Orthographic is another good option. It looks weird right now, but if you have a 180 panorama rather than a 360, that will get you some really nice lines as well. So we'll go back to spherical and hit next. Now in this stage, we can do a couple of things. We can crop our panorama if we want to make it only say 180 degrees or 90 degrees and we can bring the top down, we can also fill in these gaps up here. So it has a little bit of AI where we can click autocomplete and it's going to fill in these gaps. And if I turn it off, you can see that it actually did a pretty good job of filling this in. You can't really tell. In some cases it will do better than others. Sometimes it's horrid, but most often you can use this little auto completion to just fill in your panorama and make it really good. So now we'll hit next and this is our export tab. We can select JPEG here, go to 100% quality, and export it. That just brings up this prompt. I'll put it in my panoramas, and we'll just name it testing, and then we can hit save. Now the final thing I like to do here is we can put it in a software like Kula, which is a website I can upload single images. So like here, I'll browse, and we'll look for our testing. And now it's going to put it in here, and you'll notice it looks really wonky. And this is really disturbing, because you think, oh no, I messed up. But it's all right. And by the way, Kula is free. Anyone can create a profile and start uploading pictures. But all you have to do is hit post it, and it magically fixes itself. And then you can go back to edit and actually make the edits you would like to make. And this little dot is the direction that the viewer will see first. So if there's something particularly interesting you'd like them to look at, say this bundle of rock, you can set that there. You can click snapshot to pick the thumbnail or tiny planet to get this view. There's a few basic filters you can put on it. Bloom sometimes looks nice, like in this image, but it often overdoes it. Although here you can see it's quite a bit overdone, but that was already washed out, so we'll just leave it. You can change the filter intensity if you want to turn it down. Try and do a little HDR tone mapping, which is just going to boost contrast and sharpness. Here you can also boost sharpness. And then you can set the initial zoom and zoom limits, which will make it so that people can only zoom in so far. Um, but you can just leave those at defaults. And then also a pitch limit. If your panorama only goes up so far, you want to limit them to a certain range. And if you have the panorama is tilted, you can use this to fix that. Also, if you only have a 180 degree panorama, this vertical alignment will help. It can also help if you feel like your horizon isn't in the middle. You can lift it or set it down. Just note that it will make a gap down here. So if I lift that up, there's now a hole in the floor. And you can 
change some settings there. When you're happy with it, you can just go ahead and click save. And now this link is shareable and you can show all your friends the cool things that you've done. So hopefully this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.